Hello everyone and welcome to this session. In this session, we are going to learn about antibodies and all. Right? So, what are these antibodies? So, we will first start with antibodies. Antibodies are also known as immunoglobulin. We will first explain what is this immunoglobulin. Now, as you know, you have seen the structure of antibodies like this. It is a Y-shaped structure. Now, looking at this figure, you can say that this is something which is linear. But no, it is not actually linear. It is a globular structure, okay, somewhat shaped like this, along with short chains also. So, this is not actual, I am just saying, it is a globular three-dimensional structure, okay. So, that's why these antibodies are also called immunoglobulin. Also, they are gamma globulin, okay. Why they are also called gamma globulin? Because blood serum blood serum have three types of protein not say serum let us say plasma for now alpha beta and gamma now this gamma type of proteins are immunoglobulin right that is why these antibodies are also called as beta globulin all right so continuing with what the next definition is are proteins produced by immune system in response to presence of foreign substance called antigen they play a crucial role in immune response, specifically in adaptive immunity, by recognizing and binding to specific antigens, such as viruses, bacteria, or other pathogens. Now, you know, it is a common occurrence that some kind of pathogen, pathogen will always enter host body. Now, in order to destroy this uh, pathogen, host will produce some immune response immune response i have also described this in earlier section that this immune response can be uh, of two types and one of the, those two type is adaptive immunity which is specific kind of immunity okay so this specific immunity uh, let us say a component of this specific immunity is a b cell which then differentiate into plasma cell and this plasma cell further produces Ig, immunoglobulin, which is antibody, okay. Now, this antibody will go and bind to the pathogen, thus destroying the pathogen. So, basically, this is what this immune system works, okay. So, here are some key points about the antibody, alright. So, first point is the structure. The antibodies are Y-shaped proteins composed of two heavy chains and two light chains. Let me describe this to you. Like suppose this is an antibody. Now these two I have drawn a Y-shaped structure. Now these two lines are our heavy chain. And here in this region we have light chain. That is why we also describe antibodies as 2H and 2L. H for heavy and L for light. Okay. And the variable region at the tip of the Y arm is responsible for antigen recognition and binding. Alright. So in this body, if I separate this body using this line, so the upper region is variable region, variable region and the lower region is constant region. So in order to describe it, let us say we have these amino acids arranged like this, okay, like this in the antibody structure. Alright, joined like this. So, and here is light chain. So, if I separate this, uh, these amino acids like this, so let us say we have approximately 110 to 120 number of amino acids in the upper region, or we can say in the variable region. Okay, so what happens is in this variable region, uh, there is actually no order in which these amino acids can be arranged. Like in one antibody, the sequence here can be valine, glycine, proline, etc. And in the one first antibody. And let us say in second antibody, it can be leucine, arginine, glutamic acid, or glutamate, etc. It can be anything and these 110 to 120 amino acids will not be same. They will be variable according to the antigen. Let us say according to antigen. Okay. 
and this constant region this from here to here is our constant region now let us say we have two antibodies both are antibodies of IgG type this is also antibody this is also antibody now their constant region will be same but if you talk about IgG and IgM okay so their constant region will be a little different but at least they are same for same antibody if we take any two kinds of IgG antibodies their constant region is going to be same IgG okay but not in others uh, so the, I think this line is clear let us move next so while the constant region determines the antibody's functional class yes this is also a very important point let me erase this first okay so now listen suppose we have these two antibodies and let me make one with red okay let us say this is IgM type and this is IgG type so basically there are five classes five classes of antibodies so you can write it in or you can remember it in any sequence so usually what I have seen most of people learn it is in the form of game G A M E D 1 2 3 4 5 so these five are the classes of antibodies now G stands for gamma A stands for alpha M stands for mu E stands for epsilon and D stands for delta or this kind of delta whatever it can be it is delta basically okay so these five classes are determined on the basis of heavy chain and the constant region okay see uh, while the constant region is determined by antibodies functional class constant region this constant region is it basically determines the functional class of antibody now many books uh, suggest that this uh, heavy chain heavy chains constant region that is why I have written here constant plus heavy okay just wait a second hello what's happening I'm going to show you what I'm going to do I'm going to turn it on I'm going to turn it on उसमें ना वो चेंज कर लेना नाम अपना लिखना कंपनी का नाम लिखना और वो रेजिग्नेशन भी है और दूसरे कार्ड भी है हेलो रेजिग्नेशन है और उसमें एक मंथ की एडवांस सैलरी जो बाद में आती है वो पहले मांगी है ठीक है चल ठीक है काम कर रहा हूं मैं सो वेयर वाज आई That is why I have written the constant region plus heavy chain here. Okay. So next we are going to talk about antigen bending. Uh, wait, have I skipped something? No. Okay. So the next topic is antigen bending. Now antibodies bind to antigen through a specific interaction between antigens epitope and antibodies paratope. Let me make an antigen first. Let us say this is some antigen and and this here is our antibody okay so if we zoom this antigen zoom it then uh, this whole antigen if these are the in this antigen these are its epitope epitope and the antibodies contain Paratopes. Paratopes. Now you can say that these epitopes and paratopes are complementary to each other. Okay. Since being complementary, what they do is they interact with each other, interact with each other, and there occurs binding between them. Okay. So 
as I have written here, the specific interaction between the antigen's epitope and antibody's paratope is there, which cause antigen antibody binding. Antigen antibody binding. Okay. Now, this binding is highly specific. Highly specific with each antibody recognizing a particular antigen or closely related group of antigen. Okay. So, let us say if this IgG antibody is against some epitope of antigen, let us say of E. coli, E. coli, then the paratope of that antigen will only bind to the epitope of the E. coli only. It will not bind to any other or it can bind to some related sequence also. It overall depends on interaction. Okay. So, this is what happens in the antigen antibody binding. Now, let us move to the next point which is function. Now, antibodies have several functions including neutralization of pathogen. Of course, basically immune response is like the antibody response. So, first point is neutralization of pathogen by blocking their ability to infect cell. Okay. So, let us say this is the bacteria containing epitopes. Okay. So, what antibodies do? They will come and bind to these epitopes such that these epitopes these epitopes cannot bind to the host cell. So, this is the first mechanism for the antibody to block the pathogenesis of bacteria. Now, making the pathogens for the destruction by other immune cells. Marking. Okay. So, these antibodies, when they bind to the epitopes, they work as opsonin. Opsonin. Okay. They opsonize the, uh, these bacteria such that other cells like macrophages. I love macrophages. <laughs> Sorry. So, such that macrophages uh, comes and engulf this whole bacteria in itself and destroy the bacteria or any other pathogens which are opsonized by the antibodies. <coughs> okay. And the last point is by activating the complement system which enhances the immune response. Now, what happens is some antibody uh, gives some chemotactic signal to some inactive proteins. Inactive proteins which are complement proteins. Complement proteins. Now, these complement proteins are formed by liver and they are around 20 in number which together enhance the immune response. Now, what these complement do is they create pores in the cell wall of pathogen. Now, by creating the pores, they you can say disturb the osmotic uh, environment of that pathogen and thus destroying the bacteria, virus or any other pathogen which enters the host. So, that was for the functioning and let us go to the types. I have described you earlier that these are of five types. Okay. And the learning mnemonics for that is game. G A M E D. Now, all these, all these five classes have their own, you can say, uh, response or their unique characteristics. Now, I will explain it here. Okay. First of all, I am going to start with IgM kind of antibody. Now, this is the first antibody, first antibody that is released by B cell, basically uh, plasma cell. Plasma cell. This is pentameric. Penta, pentameric in nature. So, its structure is like this. And five. Okay. These five antibodies are connected to each other. So, uh, thus because these five antibodies are connected to each other, so they show high, uh, you know, high affinity, affinity toward, I will only say new antigen, new antigen or the antigen which is, uh, which has entered the body for the first time. Okay. One antigen can bind here, one can bind here, one can bind here, and one can bind here. Now, other uh, antibodies are only monomeric or dimeric, can be trimeric also, 
let me make this clear they can be trimeric but not uh, so they cannot bind that much amount of antibodies to it as IgM can bind to it that is why I think uh, IgM is produced first also if, if you look at the gene in the human's body so mu gene is always in front of every other gene so that is why it is you know easy to say that IgM is produced or translated first translated first then comes IgG antibody IgG antibody now this antibody is found in the largest amount largest amount in body okay so you can say 50 to 70 50 to 70 percent of the antibodies in the blood is IgG kind of antibody now as I have told you that first first comes Ig M then comes Ig G or Ig E okay if the pathogen is like bacteria then IgG will be produced and if the pathogen is allergen then Ig E is produced all right so IgG IgG also have four classes one two three four right and IgG is the only antibody that can pass through placenta pass through placenta also also remember that this IgG antibody is monomeric in nature it means it is a single y-shaped structure okay now after IgG I will describe about IgE because one point is discussed here you see allergen so this IgE is also a monomeric antibody just like the IgM but this antibody is only produced when some allergen enters allergen enters into our body now when this allergen enters what happens is this Ig <coughs> I'm really sorry this Ig E antibody two antibodies will bind to a single allergen and they will go and contact either mast cells mast cells or basophil cells basophil cells and thus creating allergic response allergic response this is also called hypersensitivity hypersensitivity okay so this IgE is again very important when allergens enter into our body then we will move to Ig uh, which was that M okay IgA now this IgA is also called secretory secretory antibody okay so in this case uh, basically it can be found in two forms so first form is in dimeric and the second form is trimeric so let me draw the structure of this IgA antibody in the dimeric form see uh, we have to simply draw two antibodies here are the two antibodies and these are connected like uh, this okay there is also secretory component if I um, I am guessing right yeah there is a secretory component and here let me first draw this J draw this J chain this is J chain and and this is the secretory component secretory component okay. <coughs> now what happens is this IgA antibody is a special antibody which is only found in the secretions 
secretions of human humans like uh, saliva uh, tears other secretions plus also found in the mother's milk mother's milk that is why they say that mother's milk contain power energy which is in the form of immunity that saves the offspring or a newborn from various infection okay so what happens is now basically this antibody iga this is normally only a j chain and these two antibody connected to each other so there is a process called transcytosis transcytosis okay a while this transcytosis uh, happen this secretory components also join this antibody and this is the characteristic feature of iga antibody only this secretory component cannot be found in other antibody and now we will talk about the last antibody which is igd antibody now this igd antibody is a special antibody which is only found on the surface of b cell igd now along with the igd there is also igm in monomeric form but uh, actually we don't know the exact uh, you know function of this igd antibody but only one function is known that this igd is found on the surface of b cell and this help the b cell to recognize antigen okay you know when antigen <coughs> see this is a b cell and these are antibodies igm and igd now these two antibodies will work as b cell receptor so whenever some antigen will comes in contact with any of these antibodies let us say one came here and other came here so the response will go to our b cell such that this b cell will transform into plasma cell plasma cell and this plasma cell will form that antibody which which will work against this antigen this antigen right here okay <clears throat> so this is basically all the classes of our antibodies now after the classes of antibodies there must be some point left okay production right yeah so the next point is the production now antibodies are produced by b cell i have explained you earlier a type of white blood cells in in response to the exposure to antigen b cell undergo a process called somatic hypermutation to produce antibodies with higher affinity for antigen a process known as affinity maturation okay so mm, okay see here. this is our b cell b cell and these are b cell receptors b cell receptors b cell receptors some uh, some antigens will come and bind to these receptors okay so after that what happens is signal goes inside the b cell b cell will transform into plasma cell and this plasma cells in turn will form antibodies against against this antigen okay this antigen right here these antigens so first of all as i have told you earlier that it, it is going to form only igm kind of antibody but what happens is uh, after some time there happens a somatic hypermutation so this somatic hypermutation causes the class switching class switching okay and which cause the production of igg antibody now this igg antibodies will attack the antigen with higher affinity they are more lethal to antigen thus uh, work can be done efficiently this is the point of somatic hypermutation okay and the next point is memory now after initial after initial exposure to antigen the immune system can produce memory b cell and memory t cell 
which remember the antigen and can mount a faster and more effective immune response upon re-exposure. This is the basis for immunologic, immunological memory and vaccination. Okay. So, what happens when antigen enters into our body? So, first response. First response of antibodies comes, let us say, around, not let us say, it comes around 7 to 8 days. Only after the 7 to 8 days of infection. But when the same antigen, same antigen into enters into our body, then this response shortens to only 3 days. And when the third exposure comes, third exposure, then it again shortens, can be let us say 1.5 days. And this happens because of the formation of memory cells, which can be memory B cells or T memory cells, can be any of the cells, okay. The basis of immunological memory and vaccination and vaccination also works in same principle like uh, if we take some injection okay <coughs> injection it contains antigen in some attenuated form when these antigens enter into our body antigen to body then the body produce immune response immune response okay so in this immune response this is the primary immune response primary it will take again 7 to 8 days but when the same anti antigen from environment comes to our body then the immune response will take less time to act against it now the last thing which we are going to study is the application of these antibodies antibodies have many practical applications in medicine and research including diagnostic test kits okay now these elisa elisa test kits western blotting method western blotting method uh, and those uh, short testing kits okay uh, they contain uh, or they work on the principle using antibodies okay now antibodies for treating disease sorry therapeutic antibodies for treating disease is also there in which we use monoclonal antibodies and as a research tool to study protein protein interaction and cell signaling pathway okay so we can use these antibodies to mark to mark these cell signaling pathway uh, pathway components so that is how we complete all the related introduction related to the antibody. I hope this helped you a lot. Thank you very much and see you soon.